Good morning, Oklahoma. Welcome to Cow Calf Corner on Sun Up. As we're all aware, we've had an unusual spring. We've had a lot of moisture, and we're getting a lot of feedback from cow calf producers about foot rot issues and lameness as cattle continue to walk around on soft ground and with some heat around the corner and harder ground. We are joined today by Dr. Rosslyn Biggs. We're going to talk about foot rot and some lameness issues. And Rosslyn, how do we open up here? Well, I think it's important to note on foot rot that it's caused by a bacteria, but uh, it's, it's a bacteria we, we find in the environment, we, we see on, on cattle that are normal. But after we've had weather uh, similar to what we've seen this spring, really wet, lots of moisture, we have a breakdown of the skin in between the digits, and that exposes the, the internal structures to, to this bacteria. And um, so we, we need to keep that in mind. Typically, it's going to be at least one limb that's going to be affected. It could be all the way around uh, as well. And so, um, you know, we're, we're looking for a sudden onset of lameness, but we need to really take a close look because foot rot, although it, it's common, uh, is only about 20% of lameness. So we want to make sure that it is truly foot rot. Any form of prevention out there for foot rot? Well, you know, there's, uh, there are vaccines on the market. I would encourage producers to, to visit with their veterinarians whether those truly make sense. In many cases, they, they may not make sense for them to, to utilize. And so as we move into the summer months, it's not that we can't see foot rot when it's, when it's hot and dry either because we all know what, what a cattle do when it gets hot and dry. Well, they congregate together. We see an accumulation of urine and uh, manure, and that creates those moist, wet environments, even though it's small and consolidated, and that can expose them to foot rot too. We also wanna make sure that they're on a good plane of nutrition, that we're not seeing, um, seeing deficiencies there, and um, also make sure that they're not having to track over areas that are gonna cause injury. To, uh, to the skin in that interdigital space, uh, that, that can lead us to problems too. So if we see it, we diagnose it, and we know we've got that swelling down there, what kind of cures, what kind of treatment right. do we see? Well, suggest? you know, it's really critical to, to make sure we're taking a look at those feet and not just because one, as I mentioned before, is lame, do we automatically go to foot rot. We wanna take a good look there and make sure that it's, we're confident that it's foot rot. Uh, we're going to have some antibiotic options to look at that, and we also need to control pain management. It's a good idea, uh, as is any infectious disease of, of, of our herd, to isolate those animals so that we're hopefully not spreading it throughout the, throughout the group. And um, then also, you know, we, we want to keep an eye and make sure we're seeing a response to that treatment. We really should see some fairly significant response within about three to four days. And if not, we need to be consulting with our veterinarian to take a closer look. We've got a, a fairly recently revised foot rot fact sheet I would encourage folks to take a look at. And, and also another resource, uh, Dr. Jones with our veterinary school gave a um, lecture in our rancher series last fall on uh, foot rot or not is what it's titled and there's a there's a video they can spend uh, 30 45 minutes taking a look at at other things it in fact may be well thank you for joining us and thanks to you all for being with us again this week on cow calf corner on sunup we'll see you next week